Hey everybody, welcome to Shifty's Club. Well guys, it's been a while since I've done a video, but um, <clears throat> I was going to go ahead and crush a bunch of things in a one. Um, first order of business, um, because like a Pikachu deck box, I thought it was all sweet, so I can't find a Snorlax one, so anyway. Uh, what I was going to tell you guys is uh, actually very bent on Mega Rayquaza for uh, regionals. Um, as you can see, I'm going to see if I can't play like all full out, like because my eyes aren't, you know, as bad as it once were, basically. A full out, well, you know. This, I'm going to have to exchange or something. I hate that because it is so well against Vespic and Flareon. Like, nobody understands that. So. I'm probably going to have to find some way to get that out uh, on my full art uh, supporters and uh, gold trainers are in the bind or so. Um, I decided I'd have a little rest nesting place for them so they wouldn't get all badly done. Since I'm not going to play test one. Pfft, heck with that. <laughs> um, and then I think you guys will like this. Okay. I'm not even sure if I'm going to play with them, but I think they're pretty cool. I bought a whole crap load of them online. <laughs> it's these uh, nice sleeves, uh, Snorlax with uh, a bunch of Pokemon, as you can see, all huddled up, being crushed by Snorlax because it's under the little uh, crease. I'm like, that's pretty cool. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about Face 5 pre release because, you know, piece of crap. I mean, like, if you got the Moltres Del Fox. You're good as gold. I mean, <laughs> it's like the only thing that could have won. So. <laughs> um, unless you pulled some really sweet stuff, which is nearly impossible. Um, another thing I wanted to show you guys is um, something that I am not going to open. Bought it at Walmart where I work at. Um, it's this mystery power box. And of course it says, I'm sorry. It says comes with five booster packs, but if I count correctly, I see one, two, three, four, five, six. Error package. <laughs> so, you guys, yeah, I like it. Um, and, um, of course, as always, I've got a whole bunch of other really cool stuff. Um... I decided I may or may not play Raichu, so I went ahead and um, bought some generation stuff because I did not buy a bunch of generations. Uh, I bought a bunch of the um, boxes that come uh, with the thing, and I just weighed some of the packs. I didn't pull nearly everything I wanted, so to go and the one card that I wanted besides Jolteon, I had to I had to go uh, buy these. So in case I decide to run Raichu instead of um, Rayquaza. If I feel like Rayquaza is going to be so big that I have to do the two for one price exchange, I'm going to do it. Because uh, I'm not sure Raikou can keep up with it. <laughs> um, that's why I'm not running Ra That's why I'm not. I think I'm not running Raikou wheels. <laughs> Even though it would be really nice. But it's, there's no way it can outlast Zygarde. There's no possible way. Um, but anyway, there's that. Um, Nothing else that I wanted to, that I can think of. Um, nope. Okay. So, I'm about to take the camera down, put it in front of the computer, and show you guys something really cool. <laughs> um, let's see. Pulling up this nice program that... Um, um, I'm going to show you guys. This is pretty cool. Well, I'm going to have to do it this way because... I won't be able to see what I'm doing unless I do it kind of sort of this way but um I'll show you guys hopefully I can I can still see half the stuff that I'm doing even with this um okay so this is basically a program called auction sniper and basically it's absolutely amazing because this thing has been doing so much for me as you can see 
I've got. I'm gonna reload this because the ultra ball should not be there anymore. Okay, let's see. Yeah, then we got the sh full art shaman. We got 22 hours to go on that. So, as you guys can see, I've currently um, max. My max is 40. So I'm asked for um. This is stuff that I can buy or bid for. Get random receiver. Um, one day left. It's currently 18. I'm going to go max 20. What shame is this one is a uh, um played. This one is near mint. And from what I can tell, uh, random receiver again. Three days. It's probably going to go up to about 20 before it's all said and done. But it's played. So shame, man. And we got here's where it starts getting interesting. You got ultra. Ultra Balls, this is a play to, obviously, currently for 125, but, 150, but, let me show you guys something like this. Ultra Ball, look at that. Now, you tell me one time where you can see it, but, see, because it says ready, but, I'm going to put it on this full screen so you guys can see how many times that right there comes up, you lost. <laughs> That's how much I love this program. There's Verizion, Full Art. Because I'm not pulling these cards out of my boxes downstairs. This is crazy. Um, Secret Rare Random Receiver. Oh, sorry. Secret Rare Random Receiver. Got my snipes there. Hopefully you guys can still see it. I can still see it. Secret Ultra Ball. This is Great Britain. A pound, I think is what it's called. 92. So that virtually weighs up to, I want to say, close to 130 or 150 bucks. I forget. But anyway, this was... um. I think that this was for yeah that plus two um um regular ultra ball with a miscut in between but no one really cares about that one <laughs> um and then we got I just decided gr break point Greenwich Eradicate Gold that Trevor not all breaks um I won for seventeen fifty I didn't consider that a bad deal um especially when uh, I can generally. Uh, turn Greninja, Eradicate, and Trevenant around. Gold Duck would be a little hard. Um, Full Art Shaman uh, won that um, 51, but you can't find it online uh, too much cheaper than that. Um, oh, but we gotta get Secret or Ultra Ball. Get this one. See, this is the early stages. This is where you guys can see where it starts out pretty low. This one was played. And it won for uh, for that. This one near mint. You can see it's lower. <laughs> you guys see a trend going. And then um, Zoroark Evolution said, "I just decided, you know what? Two Zoroarks. One was Rev Hollow. This one's just a regular Zoroark for two fifty. I um, when I see something I want, I go after it. So, <laughs> and I've only got that many bids going left. So, but that's pretty much what I've done to this day." When I found out what this thing done, I wished I would have found it sooner <laughs> because uh, actually um, the day that I figured out, found out what this was, was the day that uh, several of the auctions have ended for um, play sets of cards that I've wanted and they were at a pretty good price. And I was willing to go a certain uh, number for each of them. So it was, I got one of them. It was the uh, trainer's mails and, uh, at a whoppingly good price of $35 for all three of them, um, which they're going for much higher than that now. <laughs> I think they're about 20 bucks now. I'm not exactly sure. Um, so, pretty much, yeah. I just wanted to show you guys this. This is pretty cool. Um, that's, one of my, that's one of my things now is doing that. Um, oh, I'm gonna show you, the, show you guys this too. You guys will probably want to see this. Um, um, let's see. Let's see. Troll and Toad. Okay. Now this might be a little harder to see, but I'm gonna type in Ultra Ball. I'm gonna show you guys this. Because they actually had one for sale at a time for a hundred and sixty bucks a piece. There we go. Now it's easier to see. Basically, they had two. 
when I found out that they had these on, I seen where they had them on eBay trying to go for 170 something bucks. And then I would click, we went, click, quickly went to the website, found them for 160 piece. And I was like, you know what? That's just absolutely insanely low compared to what they're going to be. So I thought, you know, I had to jump on that because these things are going to be the biggest net profit that we have in the game. And you guys know me. I absolutely love finding those bargains that I can just absolutely snatch for, um, for a discounted price. And we know Ultra Ball is going to keep getting reprinted. It is not going anywhere because Japan won't let it go anywhere. Um, basically one of their best cards they have. Um, actually, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and sign in, but, uh, I'm not going to let you guys look at what it is. So, <laughs> But, um, okay, let's see. View current or old orders. Here's the last one I had, and this is for $41.96. You guys can see that. So, this was this one. Basically, I had two of those and two of those. And look at that price: ten ninety nine for those random suits, and they got reprinted in the um in Fates Collided. So the Ultra Ball. So I just snatched them up as fast as I could. So I made sure I saved a lot of money um, with that. Although people are going to probably be like, "Oh my God, why did you get so many of this? Why'd you get so many of that?" But, let's see, actually, I think there's a page two to this. I'm not even ex exactly sure. No, I guess it's not. I only have 17. Okay. Never mind. But yeah, I thought I'd show you guys this. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, it's the last thing I bought. And uh, I haven't really been anywhere um, to buy anything. Um, uh, so. <laughs> but, um, yeah, guys, I figured you guys would like to see that. Um, put me back to focus on the screen <laughs> um, but yeah uh, get that out of the way regionals is coming up and I'm going to talk a little bit about the different decks that I expect um, of course we don't have fates collided so random receiver won't be around um, and a couple other cards I regret not being able to play team rockets handiwork because I would have loved to see uh, several of those uh, item lock decks um, run without their resources in their hand, like Sazmatode, um Duratina, and um, um, even uh, decks like Trevenant, they can't they can't run with zero to one card in their hand because they've got to consistently put up new attackers and whatnot because they're not putting out much damage. They're setting up much slower than the other decks, and when they set up slower. Regardless, they're not putting off enough damage to do anything. Unless, of course, you have a Vileplume on the bench and you're trying to run Vespican like crazy. That won't work in Expanded because everybody is going to pick them off one by one. And we all know what happens when that happens. <laughs> but, um... So, like I said, I had Mega Rayquazas that I absolutely love. Um, thinking about playing it. Um... Also, want to return Manectric Evil Tall if it can be somewhat useful. Um, I do know that the since Darkrai was in a break uh, break point, I really wanted to try it out in a deck, and I thought Evil Tall Manectric would be a really good idea. But um, I decided I could go either Garbodor with it, or I can go Darkrai. So far, I want to go Darkrai, <laughs> just because I've got some massive attack power that I can put behind that, and uh, Manetra can just grab darkness energy back with 100 or 110 damage, 210 HP. There, there's not too much that can one shot it, so I'm not worried. Um, I can just keep piling on the energy that I discard. Um, even knocked out Pokemon uh, really don't stand too much of a shot. Um, Evil Tulls and Dark Rise moving back and forth. Of course, Garbodor is really good too. Um, there's a lot of potential for Garbodor, especially it kills Greninja. Greninja has no way of winning, 
without their abilities. So it's pretty much not a loss for them um, unless they can somehow uh, fit in two or three ways of getting rid of uh, tool cards, which no Greninja deck is going to run, you know, a Srasic and, um, um, and a Startling Megaphone. Because they I mean they they just run one Sorosic or one Starling Megaphone. They're not even worried about the rest of it because their whole goals are set up. Um, some other decks, um, like for example, um, Bronzong decks, they really have no center focus without Bronzong. And the biggest part is that they don't really try to decay you of your resources. They try to accelerate their force on the field. But there's some players who can get around with it. Um, I st I still am leaning on uh, seeing Trevenant list run Dustnor. I have no idea why it's not happening. The Pokemon is great, and it can literally end games faster than any other Pokemon. Like give some players who do run it and have run it since the beginning. Um, Mia Vila is about the only one I could think of that's uh, consistently been. Uh, trying to run Dustnor in an expanded format. Um, I mean, she understands it's good. Not saying she's a good player, but no, no I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, but, um, but anyway, um, d yeah, Dustnor is a really good uh, Pokemon to go inside of Trevenant. I um, can't see it running with Gengar anymore just because Gengar's damage output isn't great and running Trevenant Break just gives open so many doors. Um, and having that attack being able to put three damage counters on each of your opponent's Pokemon while they're under item lock is great but it would be great to have something like Dustnor because you can choose to move damage counters off something so it doesn't die right away or get knocked out right away or you can knock a Pokemon out before you attack um, so you can go ahead and get prizes if you think something you use in the prizes it's just a whole new window of opportunity but of course, uh, players like um, Chuck and Ness are probably going to run Rayquaza. Well, Chuck will probably run Rayquaza. Uh, if you want uh, Alex Perseo, uh, Ness would probably run Trevenant. And if he's smart, he'll probably either run it Trevenant, Wobbuffet, or he'll run Trevenant Dustmoor. Um, they're both really good. Um, let's see. I don't know. I doubt he's going to go to um, Georgia. He'll probably just go to Wisconsin because um, it's closer to his house with his parents and all. But um, like I said before, um, you got uh, Rayquaza, you got Trevenant. Um, we will definitely see Vespic and Flareon. It's going to be if you don't know what to play, there's a there's not no longer Vespic and Flareon. It's if you don't know what to play, play Night March. That's what everyone says. <laughs> it is the simplest, most effective deck out there. I don't think it's that simple anymore, but oh what the heck. Um, let's talk about uh, Vespic and Flareon. Um, the reason why it does so well, obviously, is because it discards a Pokemon and takes advantage of that special statue. However, because of Ancient Origins, we have the ability to play an Ancient Origins, one of each, Flareon, Jolteon, and Vaporeon, to switch types. That way, all of your different types are covered. Grass, uh, Fire, uh, Lightning, and Water are all those weaknesses are covered, so you don't have to pile as much damage onto a Pokemon. Now, because of this, most of your players aren't really smart enough to play all of them, even though I probably would, because a lot of players are going to try out Delphox. Regardless how bad it is, they're going to try it out. They're going to see its failures and whatnot. Now, do I think Delphox is completely bad? Absolutely not. Does it have the potential to keep up with the metagame we have today? Absolutely not. <laughs> so, um, basically... Um, I think that even, um, with that, I think Vaporeon is needed. Um, we have the grass, obviously, with, um, Vespican. There's a lot of fighting Pokemon, water Pokemon, uh, running around that, um, that you can basically just one shot with weakness and not have to worry about, um, piling so many Pokemon in the discard pile, which is good because then you could get those, uh, turn one, uh, chaos if you're going second and you can start accelerating the game very fast um there's going to be a lot of size a lot of seismic toads i believe um in every deck because i mean it's easy tech it's uh very effective and i think 
that's what teases Night March players to are not, <laughs> but Vespican Flareon players to play a four four Vespican line, and then play f obviously four EV but three um, Plasma Flareon, one regular one Jolteon one Vaporeon from you know Ancient Origins. Um, but like I said before, guys, um, the deck is solid, and I like I like to say if you don't know what to play, play Vespican Flareon. It's as simple as straightforward. Its concept is very simple. All you have to do is be able to manage your resources. That means don't play for Sycamore. And I know there's a lot of guys who can't get away from that. N is still in our expanded format. So Cold Rest is still in our expanded format. <laughs> you guys see a trend here. I'd rather use these guys uh, in a deck that literally will mill itself to death. Now if a deck's just just regularly plays through its style. I probably wouldn't. I probably play Sycamore instead or Juniper, whichever uh have you. I like Juniper just because it's a full art, so <laughs> um even though I don't play any of my Mega Rayquaza, it's just useless really. Um but I think that one's pretty uh pretty good. Um now to Night March. I think I covered Vesp and Flareon pretty good, but if you guys have any questions just let me know. Of course I'll save that at the very end, but um Night March. Night March isn't at its full prime yet. I guarantee you though. This set released is it doesn't help it as much. Mute is not really a factor. The next set that comes in after Worlds does not have a factor. Wait until the set after that. That comes out right before City Championships. When you see that set come out, I can't tell you what. But I can tell you what, what I've been told, that Night March will be the true champion of the TCG Expanded. No deck will stand a chance. <laughs> and this is what I hear from Japanese players. <laughs> like, they they literally already know what's coming out. Because, I mean, one of the guys that, um, that I know, he is that actually works... For the Pokemon coming in Japan, I mean, he can't play the game truly competitively because of, in the U.S., because of the rule, but, um, but they allow him to play it in Japan, it's fine, um, but that goes on to say, um, I'm not afraid of Night March right now. Night March literally has no effect on me right now, because the Pokemon must be in the discard pile, um, New EX has to have one, one of them out. At all times, so basically, I can just uh, I can take those night marches out. It has no way to do anything. Now you have to bring those Pokemon back, and if you're gonna try Buddy Buddy Rescue revives, I don't want to say because <laughs> um, and if if Night March tries anything, I mean, I've got a very simple counter. Very simple, very effective. I originally thought it was you know not good, and then. When, when Night March presents as a big threat, you've got to have some way to fend it off. And of course, Jolteon X. With that flash raise, about the only thing that can uh, truly stop it. Because um, with expanded format, we do have um, the Dimension Valley with Mew X and the ability to run basic energy. So Aegis Slash really doesn't do too much here. Um, and of course, if you play things like um, you play Tech Regis or you play um, Tech Safeguard Pokemon, it really doesn't do anything because all they're gonna do is just pull up the regular Night March Pokemon because they'd rather go for uh, they'd rather go for the one price exchange instead of two, regardless. Even if uh, things like that do occur, um, there's several little techs you can put in different decks, but Night March, I don't recommend playing it at all. Um, whatsoever um but it'll definitely be shown it'll be it definitely will pop up at world or <laughs> really um it will pop up at regionals guaranteed um now i'm going to go over a couple of uh slightly less popular decks that i believe will make it but probably not as big of a uh wrecking ball the first one by far is going to be Raikou Eels. Raikou Eels 
is my vote for rogue deck of the century right now <laughs> because this thing can run and it can run fast and furiously now what does it really do well basically the electric will sit on the bench and dynamo to a raikou that has literally no retreat cost um and then it has an ability if there's a lightning energy attached to it text the uh 20 less damage to it so and its attack is uh, I think it's 50 plus 20 for each lightning energy attached to it so basically uh, it's a one price exchange it's okay to me but I mean it just it just can go off way too easily um, if you can get three electric you can attach a single uh, lightning energy that right there's 140 damage plus your uh, modifiers um, like fighting fury about which I'm sure everybody's gonna put onto it um, make it like a literally an EX Pokemon um, plus the ability to stall 20 damage so it makes sense um, if I buy if I played the deck I'd probably have three fighting fury belts and two assault vests just because there are a lot of decks out there that play special energy and you can just basically cripple them um, so they can't really do anything so <laughs> there's times when that uh preventing 40 damage each attack is much better than um, adding 40 HP obviously um, but another word to go along with that um, they do have their faults and failures of course um, there are going to be some shows of Halucha I guarantee you there will be Lucario Halucha decks there will be um, there will be one player I know of that's going to be testing Mega or Dactyl but I know he's not going to do well <laughs> um, he hails from out of town though, so I don't I don't really care. He's he's not gonna win by anything of one or two rounds, so if that <laughs> and I'm guessing most of them or one or two of them are gonna be buys. <laughs> um but if you have to play against them, just be just be aware because the weakness match is about the only match that they can win. Um what else am I forgetting? Um I think that's about it. Um I really don't see anything else, but I mean, as far as lightning weakness, uh, lightning's weakness, I don't see Machamp or Yados being a huge factor. Uh, not a lot of people really know how to play the deck. Um, even though Mach Machamp Fighting Fury Belt does very well with the Ariados, um, and then you can basically just use things like Dynamotor and Smurgle and move and attach lightning energy to the bench one, and then use Smurgle to swap them out for fighting. I mean, they're very effective methods. Um, of getting a good Machamp out, I might use it. I don't know. It depends on how well my uh, matchups, uh, my playtesting goes against certain matchups. Right now, I mean, Mega Rayquaza can set up a freaking turn one and uh, just mash my opponents in the face. I love it. <laughs> um, let's see. I'm trying to think of the other decks. Um, Best Begin Vileplume, uh, seen a little bit of play, but I think that if it stays the way it stays I think a lot of players are gonna try to play it with more than just four double colorless because there's another deck number two on my list for for the rogue deck for regionals and that is straight metal and this is a basically bronze on concept um, everybody knows we can't use the break yet we can't use Lucario yet so that sucks but Basically, we have some of the some of the best um, technique uh, styles of play. Like blue in Magic: The Gathering has what we call technique styles of play, and what it does is it uh, kind of takes uh, control of your opponent. Metal does about the same thing because you've got Cabalion um, EX at 180 HP doing 30 damage for one metal, and discards a special energy attached to it. So that's pretty good. Of course, people say, oh, Jirachi does it better. Jirachi discards and prevents, prevents the attack. Next turn. Okay, so what? I'm attaching a Fighting Fury Belt. I'm doing 40 damage. I'm sitting here. I don't have just 60 HP. I can basically just... I can basically kill the O, um, rush in, put it on the bench, attach Bronzong, bring it back out, a hundred, and this is what Jirachi can't do. I can do a hundred and 
Nothing, not even Jolteon, not Regice, can stop that attack from happening. That's what I like about it. That's why it's in the deck. Regular Cobalion is definitely in the deck. Being able to prevent the defending Pokemon from doing anything to it, regardless what it is, for two metal and a colorless of 80 damage, is pretty good. Um, that's all I really use it for. Uh, of course, you also have the option of uh, 20 plus 20 for metal um, on it. And that's the um, Noble Victory's full art that I have. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to run it, uh, run this deck, but Slash is definitely a contender. Like I said, you're basically controlling what your opponent can and can't do the whole game. Um, with I think with Slash and Cobalion EX, people say that's a little too crowded, but... Think of the different odds and ends. Aegislash has a huge, uh, better power of abusing uh, tons of metal and just being thrown on one Pokemon. So it can consistently get knockouts. I only played one Dialga EX. And this is the full art one from uh, the Plasma, um, or no, Phantom Forces. Um, I played this um, Phantom Forces Dialga. And 150 damage is pretty good, but for one metal, two colors, I think 60 damage to 50 Pokemon is EX, it can't attack next turn, which is pretty good. Of course, you have things like Zoroark Floatstone, Kelio Floatstone, they can just get you by the situations like that. But it's also got two metal for two colorless and 150 discard two metal. Bronze all gets it right back. So, <laughs> um, thanks to Bronze Hung coming out in Phantom Forces, I love that Pokemon to death. Um, but it's it's gonna go away after um, this year. It's pro it's gonna rotate to expand it so we're a little sad but we'll handle it um on another note though um we've got um raikou eels we got metal bronze on i've got two more decks that i believe kind of rogue i'm gonna try to keep it under 40 minutes so i can't promise anything um <clears throat> the f the third one is kind of a uh, it's not rogue. People know of the deck concept a lot, but it's lost a lot of focus. And I want to kind of bring it back because it does have a lot of potential, and that's Aromatisse. Now, Aromatisse has gained a lot more than people think from some of the cards that came up um, before um, Fates Collide. So, Aromatisse with um, obviously Cernius, the reason Cernius from XY. Um, obviously a tech starting a CX because everybody likes to be able to destroy Night March in a situation where um, you can Lysander up Pumpkaboo, they have a Joltik on the bench, 60-30, knockout, knockout. Um, I like it, I like that ability, plus the ability to knock out and execute if your opponent was, a, was forced to start execute, it's pretty nice because you can go, okay, well you're going to retrieve the bench, well let me get out Cernius here. Um, Aromatisse, fair energy to it. Boom, put it out. 60, oh, 30 execute, knockout. <laughs> it's like a free prize. It's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> but basically what I'm getting at is like um, Cernius does have its, uh, have its potential. It's got the potential to knock a Pokemon out one hit given the right scenario. Um, um, Cernius CX with a Fighting Fury Belt and I've been able to use Giovanni's scheme 170 uh, can knock out half the EXs in our, in our format, so um, that's pretty good. Um, and I have a version that will run Hypnotoxic Laser um, just because it's a nice little um, technique card, and I had to split the difference between it and Enhanced Hammer, so I basically run two of each instead of three of one because I did have it. Three Enhanced Hammers, like, I think I'm just going to take out another one card and I'm just because I didn't find it to run Super Ride and Sacred Ash at the same time so I put two two and just took one of them out um, and I'm still debating whether Super Ride or Sacred Ash is better in that concept I've got Super Ride so far because I'd rather get those um, fairy energy back that way so it does work though um, but um so fairies uh, with Cernius EX um, the real attacker that people should use is by far Mega Gardevoir, but people don't seem to realize that that it's not that you can't get it off correctly like 100% of the time. 
you've got to use utilize resources that you didn't have before, like Max Elixir. Because think about a format where you can run 12 fairy energy in a deck. 12. You have access to 3 to 4 Max Elixir in a deck. You can literally just start piling up energy on turn 2. You could have, you could have, um, um, Gord of, Mega Gord of Witch and mash your opponent in the face, like, over and over and over and over and over. So, I like it. Um, but yeah, that's deck number three. So, pretty much those are my three. And then the fourth one is a deck that I've already mentioned before. But this deck, the only reason why I'm mentioning it is because of a couple Pokemon, or sorry, a couple trainers that came out in, um, 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 Breakpoint. But I don't think it's going to see a lot of play until Fates Collide comes out. Because it's, I think it's going to bomb out when Fates Collide comes. <laughs> um, and here's a standard deck that you can um, make into an expanded. I talked about Machamp Baryodos, and I named Electric, which can be replaced with Bronzong now. So that would make it standard. But here's why. If you play it with Smurgle, you can basically get those like um, metal energy onto um, Machamp. You have two bronze two. I mean, this this deck is not running Fighting Stadium. It has no reason to run Fighting Stadium because you you literally can get these. Uh, you can literally have Strong Energy, um, Fighting Fury Belt. Um, I can play Giovanni Scheme. I can do all kinds of stuff. There's not a lot of Pokemon out there that are going to be able to stall that knockout with uh, with or without Fighting Stadium. Because things like Rayquaza, you really can't do anything to. I mean, 160, you have to have you would have to have a Muscle Band, a fight, a Strong Energy, Fighting Stadium, plus Giovanni's Scheme. That's what you would have to have to knock it out. And that right there is just like unnecessary. I'm thinking with Mega Rayquaza, I can literally just find a way to retract it. So what I did was I figured. Um, I would throw in um, a more um, of a lock concept and I'd have some cards that would say like enhance hammers just discarding stuff they are, we're forcing them to get their puzzle of times out early because if you force them to go first and they throw out the special energy that's already game because what you're doing is you're starting them where they have three resources to attack you with they already used one on turn one, so even if they could get it all set up, you've got four different cards that can discard special energy. You have Sarasic, you have Team Flare Grunt, you have Enhanced Hammer, and then you have Crushing Hammer, which I run all four, which is crazy, but still effective. Um, and I still have room for other stuff, <laughs> which is insane, but most people don't know how to do it. I run four Sycamore. Um, but yeah, no, um, the, your trainers melt Ultra Ball via Seekers, but the other stuff is, is absolutely dire to this deck. Um, one of the things that I found out about this deck is that you literally have to play this deck perfectly for it to win enough games to win a tournament or even top cut. That's why it's number four. I don't know any players that can do this well enough. If you can... This deck literally can win enough, but I am not that player anymore. I used to be, but I'm I'm not a guy who can make every single move perfectly. I'm not um I'm not what um God what's his name um I'm not what Michael Pramel Watt used to be back in 2010. I'm not like that uh where he could take a Guardi Galley with Machamp and uh play it absolutely perfect through a tournament. And uh, only lost due to like two cards, because you would have had top deck the two cards he needed, and I mean that's pretty much just done the game. But that's about the way this deck is. So there's basically my regionals. Um, next episode more than likely is going to be um, something about the standard format because we're gonna, this is going to be our last um, real expanded um, tournament scene, and uh, I'm not doing a lot for the other players but except for the guys who go to Georgia but 
if you do play in the expanded tournament and um or play in the regional championship after Georgia where you do have fates collided, give Machamp a shout out, please. Because at that point you can put in Reggie Rocky X, you can have a tech Zygarde in the backfield, you can um you can have so much in that deck. It'll help you in so many ways. But I don't want to keep you guys too long. We've already been over 40 minutes, and I hate to do that to you guys. Um, anyway, if you haven't subscribed, you should subscribe. I'll see you in the comment section down below. And as always, I hope you guys have as much fun as I had. And I'll see you guys next time. At Shifty's Club.